So now we're going to go through how to do a nasogastric tube, um, an NG tube insertion. So first we're going to go through just some basic anatomy so that you can see what you're doing. Um, so Mike's got his tube here. First he's going to measure. So he's going to measure from the tip of the nose around the ear, past the xiphoid process, and toward the umbilicus. Now, that's going to be his mark, and what I suggest you do is put a little piece of tape there so that you can remember what your mark was, because um, otherwise, you're, you know, the patient might get a little wily, and uh, you might not remember what the actual number was. All right, so now we're ready, and so he's going to start by passing it past the nasal turbinates. Now, when you get to here is when your patient's going to start to gag. Okay, um, they may even throw up if their stomach is very distended. Um, also, you'll notice that the structures change, so you might have to um, reorient your tube in order to get past those structures. If your patient's able to swallow water or ice, this is also when you're going to do that. And if not, you're still going to ask them to try to help passage of the tube by swallowing. So then we're going to go past here, and what you'll notice is that the esophagus and the trachea are super close. So as you get about halfway down with your tube, if you're going into the trachea and lung, they're going to start to cough. And if you hold the, the tube kind of still, you're going to notice that they breathe in and out the tube. Not good. All right, so we're going to continue passage here. And you'll notice that this is about where the xiphoid process is. So if you measured there, your NG tube is probably going to be a little short and you've got a lot of um, other issues that you might have caused. So now we're going to go into the gastric area and that's the length of the tube that we have and then you would secure it at the nose. So now that we've kind of gone through just the anatomy of what you're doing, we're going to show you how to do that on our patient. Now for the step-by-step -step nasogastric tube or NG tube suction. Okay. Yeah, so what we're going to do is make sure first that the patient has a really large basin in front of them because passage of the tube could actually make them vomit pretty heavily. All right, so now what we're going to do is take out the tubing. Now there's a couple of different schools of thought on this. Some folks say that you should get it really cold um, so that it goes down easier because it's stiff. And some folks like to warm it up and loosen it up. Um, so that it's more flexible. Um, and there's not a lot of evidence either way, so that's really kind of up to you. So the next thing I'm going to do is measure it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to measure from the end of the nose around the ear and then down to the umbilicus. Okay? Now I want to mark this because there's a good chance I'm not going to remember where that mark actually is where I need to end. Okay, so this is where I'm going to stop pushing the tube in. The most important part here is to lube the tube because the patient's going to be really uncomfortable as you're shoving this tube past their swallow. Basically, they're going to have a huge gag reflex right near the epiglottis. All right, so now we're going to go down um, just into the nares for now, okay? So I'm going to make sure that she hasn't had any trauma. If this person's come in with craniofacial trauma, we're not doing this at all. Okay, so now that I know that this nary is patent, I'm going to go in just a little bit. All right, now this is the part where I'm going to say, do you feel okay? Um, is this all right? Because they're going to start to gag. So as she's starting to gag, it's also hitting structures in the back of her throat where I'm going to want to rotate this a little bit so that it goes down easier. Now again, she's probably going to start to cough. And that big basin is here because if she's real distended and we're going to have to do a lot of suction, she's probably going to vomit a large amount. All right, so we're going to go ahead and push this all the way down. So this would also be the point where if it was going into the trachea and the lungs, you can actually just lightly hold the tube and watch it. And if she's breathing the tube, if it's in the wrong place, it's going to start to float in and out with every breath, okay? If she has a lot of gastric distension, this is the part where you're going to start to see a lot of gastric juice inside the tube. Yeah. All right. Now, I've gotten to where my mark was, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to secure it. So, always make sure to have paper tape, because when we're going to secure it to the nose, um, 
we want to make sure that it's not pulling off the patient's skin if the tape's secured too tightly. So some hospitals will actually have their own special securement devices and you don't have to use tape. Um, but they're fairly expensive and so if your hospital doesn't then you need to be able to secure the tube well and you'll really want to check it every shift to make sure that it hasn't moved. So usually you can make a chevron by just making two legs on paper tape here, attaching a piece to the nose, the bridge of the nose here, and then just like a candy cane wrap around each leg of the tape around the tube, kind of like a candy cane. There we go, and then we're wrapping the other piece around, and just make sure it wraps securely. All right. Now, this is just very temporary. We do not want this tube to come out. Yeah, and you're gonna have to check the tape pretty often. Um, we secrete oil through our pores all the time, so it's pretty common for the tape to come loose and to need to be resecured. <laughs> Now, at this point, I really want to make sure that the tube is in the right hole. It's secured, so I know it's not going to go anywhere, which is great. Um, now, old school is to go ahead and inject air into this port with 60 milliliters of air, so a really big syringe. And you would inject air and then listen with your stethoscope to make sure that you hear kind of a blurp in the stomach. Um, and you're welcome to do that, but it's not diagnostic for the tube being in the right place. So what you're going to need to do is follow your policies, um, but usually you're going to withdraw some gastric acid and put that on some paper and or get an x-ray to make sure that it's in the right spot. And those are absolutely essential steps if you're going to be um, putting any medicines or fluids in here. Now depending on where you are, you're just going to have a little anti-reflux valve to put here to keep the drainage from going all over the bed. Um, this is a slightly fancier one that is more appropriate for using for food and fluids. And then of course if you're just going to hook it up to suction, you'll have a suction piece here that hooks nicely into your catheter for you to be able to turn on suction. Um, and you'll need to follow whatever your orders are for intermittent suction, continuous suction, high or low, those kind of things. Alright guys, that wraps it up for the step-by-step -step NG tube insertion.